This is the Colombo crime family. This is actually a thing that you guys entered into evidence in court in 1992. You got the acting boss, the boss, the underboss, the acting underboss, the consigliere. You've got, of course, Carmine the Snake, Alley Boy Jr., Joey Legs. Joe Legrano. Wait, we prosecuted him for, for murder. Hank the Bank, Fat Larry, Joe Fish, Frankie Blue Eyes. Frankie Blue Eyes, you do not want to meet. Yeah. Well, I don't think I want to meet any of these guys. You got Joey Brains. Joey Ambersino. Joey Brains, by the way, was his nickname, but it was not said in a complimentary way. He had robbed a store at the corner when he was 14 years old, then ran down the street into the social club where the gambling was going on. That's why they called him Joey right. Brains. These families, in a lot of cases for a long time, were thought of as kind of above the law. And kind of one by one, they got taken down by people like you, starting with the small fish, and the small fish flips over on the bigger fish, and the bigger fish flips over on the bigger fish, and ultimately you find yourself up to the, uh, to the whale. How do you go about getting people to flip? The idea is to build the case against them so that they really have no future in the life. You know, just getting them to realize that is the first step in the process. Nobody comes in without having an arrest, a death threat, something else upon them. There's no reason to come in in the process of prosecuting these cases, investigating them, prosecuting them, you guys got to see what mob bosses are like. So, people have talked about Trump like he was a mob boss for a long time. Do you see those parallels when people make them? There's a lot of parallels. Yeah. And, and in particular, the attacks on the people that are potential witnesses against him. And of course, if this was in mob life, that usually ends up with, a, with some sort of death sentence and so forth for these people, especially if they're called a rat. The bullying in particular, a lot of that comes from the same mindset. Right. The emphasis on loyalty is so reminiscent of John Gotti. John Gotti was caught on tape in a case that we prosecuted where he said, do you know why Louis Dubano is going to be killed? And he's being killed because I called him to come in, and he didn't come in. That sense of, I am the boss, you are loyal to me, and an absence of loyalty is a death penalty. Trump's attacks on prosecutors, attacks on judges, and intimidation of witnesses, he's doing it in this very flagrant way. He has attacked Tish James as corrupt, a racist, and a monster. He's attacked Jack Smith as deranged, a lunatic, a thug, and a psycho. He's attacked Judge Chutkin as a fraud and a biased, Trump-hating judge. Are there ever mafia bosses who would do anything like that? Like go on the pages of the New York Post and attack the judge that was hearing an organized crime case? It wouldn't be done. And if they did do something, it would be done very quietly. Yeah. And it would be done in a way that it wasn't directly being connected to the family. Right. Trump seems to have a very different ethos. How real do you think the threat is to those people he's attacking? We know it's real. There's a woman who is under indictment now for threatening Judge Shutkin. The problem here is that you have so many lone wolves who listen to what Trump is saying and decide, I'm going to act on it. That is why I think you are seeing the gag orders. In the former president's brief to Judge Chutkin on the gag order, he says whether if people act on this, that's on them, right. not on me. You think Trump would care if someone took a shot at Judge Chutkin? No, I don't think so. There's a lot of things in the Trump era that are chilling to me, but like, to be sort of like, of course the former president would be perfectly happy if someone took a shot at a judge who's prosecuting him, is so fucked. I'm an agent. There, it's not like it's the former president and it makes any difference to me. It's somebody that's threatening somebody. Yeah. That's it. You know, Trump, such a thoroughly New York character of an era when the five families really matter in New York. You know, Trump like moved in this world, right? Real estate, totally mobbed up, everything he fucking did, Atlantic City, the casino business. The reason I think about this is in the context of the Mafia Dons, who all thought they would all get away with it forever. And then all of a sudden, like the roof came in. Like, is that what's gonna happen here? Can you imagine Donald Trump in an orange jumpsuit? No, but not for the reason you think. I think he is gonna flee the country before he can be put in a, in a jumpsuit. It is extremely difficult to sit there and listen to the testimony that comes in against you. Yeah. And day after day after day, it's a terrible grind. Fugitives run all the time. Yeah. And I think that that's what he'll try to do. Have you thought you could imagine Donald Trump in an orange jumpsuit? Oh, yeah, absolutely.
If you leave the political out, he is getting convicted. The two federal cases. Yeah, yeah. Or he's done. But we could literally be in this situation where he is convicted and he is also reelected. And at that point, the answer is, isn't that the end of what we think of as America?